Dino uses ECMAScript modules or ESM natively as its default module system. So we can use the syntax that's a little cleaner and easier to work with right out of the box using Dino. So within our project, we have our sing function here. And what we want to do here is create another file. This will be called main.ts and we'll use this main file to import what we've created in sing. First of all, we are exporting this function. Then we can import sing from dot slash sing dot ts. Then I'm going to call the sing function. Let's wrap it in a console log actually, just so that we can see that this is working. And then what we want is the phrase. We'll remove that there. And then if we run dino main dot ts, this is going to sing my beautiful song, bread, bread, bread. Now, because we're importing this local file, we have to use the path. We're using a relative path here. So it always has to start with dot or dot dot to import that file. Another thing we have to do is include the file extension. So we're not going to be able to get rid of the TS at the end of that. This is to make sure we're always importing the right thing. Now with our ES modules, another thing to remember is that we can export default. So we can export this as the main function. As soon as I do that, we're getting this squiggly underline because I need to remove the curly braces around that. And now if we run dino main.ts again, that should work. We also can export objects, arrays, all the things that we're comfortable doing from before. Another thing we can make use of is the following. So I could say console log import meta.url. What this will return when I run dino main.ts is the location of the file. So this is going to dig into that. If we wanted just the directory name, we could use import.meta.durname. Then we're going to see our directory name right here. And that'll just omit the name of the file. How about libraries? We already saw in the previous video how we can import from JSR. So we can say import sing from JSR colon at Eve Porcello slash sing. So you'll need to add this to the project first if you haven't already with Dino add JSR colon at Eve Porcello slash sing. Nice. That'll place that into a new configuration file there. And then if I want to use it, I'm actually not importing it from the neighbor file. We're instead importing it from JSR. So let's try to console log this. Now when I run it, dino main.ts, we have our song being sung. It's also possible to import from NPM. Import OpenAI. from npm so it'll always start with that npm namespace colon open ai so now let's try to do this const open ai equals new open ai then we'll console log that it will probably ask me for my api key and even though I've granted it access to all of those things, I haven't configured that. So that's okay. We could at a later time. It's also possible to import from a URL. So we're going to use Dino's third party module repository here. If you go to dino.land slash X, this is a hosting service for all of these scripts. You can grab any of these that feel right to you. I'll choose the open AI one again. And this is just showing us that we can import from a URL. So this is a nice way to import this into the project as well. One of the coolest features of Dino is that it automatically caches remote modules so that when you import from a URL like this or a registry like JSR, the module is going to be downloaded and cached on your machine. So when I started working on Dino projects, I was thinking, okay, so I'm understanding that there's a configuration file like the Dino JSON file. That makes sense but where's my node modules folder? And then I say that out loud and I realize that's kind of silly because the word node is in there. So that's probably not right. But 
I was still curious about where this was being stored. The place that this is actually being stored, you can find out by typing Dino info, and this will give you a rundown of where all of this is. So you now see the Dino dir location. So inside of your users and then your username library caches, this is where all of this is being stored. And then you have the remote modules cache as well for anything that's remote. So what this does is each module is fetched once and we'll use the cached version of this instead of refetching it unless I say I want to do that specifically. So for example, I could type Dino dash dash reload main.ts and this is going to go download any of the files that are necessary to make this work. So this is going to go grab the most recent version of these projects. So not only does this help us with efficiency, it also helps us work with files offline. And as you might imagine with Dino, there are stricter security measures as well. So all of those are baked into this cache. So we're leveraging the ECMAScript module system to make all of this work. And then this helps us manage our dependencies well, and also helps us to cache so that we can be as efficient and secure as possible.